You're on mute, Mr. Brock. Well, here we go again. Another day, another NDP liberal financial scandal, this time a contracting fried supply chain. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is the total value of misappropriated funds under the Indigenous procurement system? Uh, I do not uh, have that information, and you would have to actually uh, um, refer to Indigenous Services Canada. We are working on the 5% related to PSPC's targets. The Assembly of First Nations testified that there are a number of shell companies securing government contracts in the Indigenous procurement program. How many shell companies has the government detected and identified? Again, I think you would have to direct that question to Indigenous Services Canada, who are responsible for the IBD. To your knowledge, is ISC actually looking into the number of shell companies? Uh, I am not familiar with their um, activities, sorry. To your knowledge, has ISC or anyone at PSPC made any referrals to the RCMP? Uh, I am not aware. How many cases has PSPC identified in which a company hires an Indigenous person simply to gain access to federal contracts through the Indigenous Procurement Program? Again, that is a program that is uh, held by the Indigenous Services um, Canada, and they would be the ones um, identifying, not PSPC. Chair, I'm ceding the rest of my time to Mr. Genuis. Thank you, Thank you, Chair. The, the AFN has said, as my colleague mentioned, that most of the companies receiving Indigenous set-asides are actually shell companies. That's according to the AFN. Do you agree with their findings? I would not be able to provide that information, or will I yeah, not? But you're, but you're, sorry, sorry to jump in. You're, you're the procurement department, though. Uh, you're uh, responsible for overseeing government procurement. This is a very serious allegation from one of the leading Indigenous organizations in the country. Do you have an opinion on it at all? I do not have an opinion, and I would refer the, you to uh, request that question to the Indigenous Services uh, Canada. Okay, that's that's that, that's very striking. Most of the companies uh, are shell companies, according to this program, and you're responsible for procurement, and you don't have an opinion either way. Uh, the government uses its own deeply flawed Indigenous business list rather than relying on criteria and lists developed by Indigenous organizations. Why is that? That is the rules that we are uh, bound by, and those rules are set by Indigenous Services Canada as well as the Treasury Board Secretariat of Canada. But, but why, why is it that um, why is it that, that, that you develop your own list instead of working with Indigenous organizations and relying on lists that they develop? Is there a policy rationale that you're aware of? I am not aware of that. That is a responsibility of the Indigenous Services Canada. And we are bound by those rules, and we are working on how we can actually increase okay. Indigenous... So do they, can I just clarify then? They make all the rules, and you make none of the rules with respect to how you define what is an Indigenous company or what is or is not a shell company? Do You, have, you, you don't have any role whatsoever, you're saying? Uh, no, we do not. That is the Indigenous Services Canada's responsibility to develop those definitions. How come you're responsible for procurement for everything except Indigenous procurement then? We are responsible for procuring and trying to increase the Indigenous uh, participation in procurement, but the rules related to the IBD are not ours, and the rules okay, but, but, to the PCB is fraud not ours. But prevention in a general sense, is, is fraud prevention part of your role? Not in the uh, Indigenous uh, Services Canada IBD. They are the ones okay. that are doing the audits and it's the validation just, it's just of those companies. It's bizarre to me then that you are the procurement department. Presumably, you're supposed to have some expertise on this area, and yet you're taking none of the responsibility in the particular case of Indigenous procurement. Um, I want to ask as well, uh, the way to prevent shell companies from giving uh, all of the work to non-Indigenous companies is to have subcontracting requirements. And that's why the rules require that a certain proportion of subcontracts under the Indigenous set-aside go to Indigenous companies. Are these subcontracting rules enforced? 
The subcon so there are various ways for us to actually uh, increase Indigenous participation in our contracts. One of them is for um, the prime contractor. Sorry, very, very, very limited time. Can you answer the specific question? The one third subcontract rule is it enforced? But I, in in what context do you want that? Like if if there is an, when indigenous, an indigenous requirement. Company Ma'am, it's very simple. When an Indigenous company receives a contract uh, under a set-aside, they are required to have one-third of their subcontracts be Indigenous companies. Uh, it appears that there is no tracking of this. Very simple question. Is this one-third subcontract rule enforced? Yes or no? That would be enforced by Indigenous Services Canada. Is it being enforced right now? Or, or you don't know? They would be the ones that would be able to answer that question. Ma'am, it either is being enforced, it isn't being enforced, or you don't know if it's being enforced. That's my question. Which is you would have you to know? refer to Indigenous Services Canada to obtain a response Mi to that question. Mi Mi Mr. Chair, I believe that's my time, but can you put the question to the witness and insist that she provides a response? If she doesn't know, she doesn't know, but she should tell us she doesn't know. Is 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 the contract is, is the requirement being enforced? I think I've asked the question four or five times now, and the witness has an obligation to answer it. Ms. Pickett? The it would be the responsibility of Indigenous Services Canada to actually enforce that, and they're doing the audits and validation of this happening, and that's that's what I know. I don't know whether or not they are doing it, but I would say that they that's their responsibility, and therefore they're doing it. Maybe I can ask. Okay, so, so maybe she doesn't I'm, know if it's being enforced. Yeah. Does PSPC maybe I can just ask on for Mr. Genoas? Does PSPC not have an oversight responsibility? For that, considering it's purchasing, not in and the I'm just indigenous. To continue, maybe not in the indigenous services. Uh, like th for the IBD list, we're not the ones responsible for validating or auditing that list. The list, or for purchases, for the directory. Okay. So we're yes, responsible sir, for procuring. We're not responsible for the directory, but we need to actually validate the. Um, no, I apologize. The I just want to make sure you, you were we were getting the right question to you. I think we'll move on to Miss Atwin now. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Just 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 a point of order, though. Like like. There, sorry, Miss Atwin. Just in. just one second. Did that not answer the question uh, as put forward, Mister Genoas? I, I understand that. They don't maintain the list, but it's a question of whether a rule around subcontracting is enforced. Uh, that that is a responsibility that should f uh, follow the procurement department. And the witness is saying she doesn't know, uh, which is which is. So I, I guess uh, the question is: is the the rule around is the rules being enforced around subcontracting, not the list, but are the actual contracting rules being followed for sub subcontracting? So. Indigenous Services Canada are responsible for the PSIB. They are responsible for the definition. So the companies that they have in their directory would actually follow that. The subcontractor or the 33% the is still under their uh, purview to investigate. Whether they are following the rules or not, is Indigenous Services and PSPC would not be aware. Correct. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what we really should think about what we just saw in that committee video. It's so hard to get answers. These conservatives are asking the right questions. We see it all the time. These liberals get in the way. The witnesses are never prepared. They don't have the right answers. I try to keep notes, but there's no sense. Let me know in the comments what I should think. My name's Aaron, this is Canadian Looney, and this is another Wild Committee investigation video. There are so many of them under this Trudeau, NDP, Jagmeet, uh, Liberal Coalition government. It's a total farce. We need an election. That's it. There's no more to say about that. We just need an election. Hopefully we'll get one. My name's Aaron. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. Please leave a comment. Love the comments. Check your next video. Thank you for watching this one. Remember to get notified for the live shows. That's worth a look. Our live shows and getting involved in the chat room. It's a good experience. Come check it out. That's it. Learn about Canadian federal politics with Canadians similar to yourself. That's it. My name's Aaron. Canadian Looney.
Catch you next video. Thanks for watching this one.